Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I want to show these two side by side. This is the Gen 3 Seiko Sumo on your left, which is the SBDC 083. This is the current generation Seiko um, Marine Master 300, the SLA 021. Um, very comparable in size. Okay, both I think about a 44 mil. I think this is a 44, this is a 45. I can measure them, we'll see. And then our, our tip to tip's about the same where they're really different is the thickness. So this looks a little more compact. This just looks more spread out. That wingspan looks longer, but it could be an illusion just due to the fact of how fat this case is. But both of these are very popular in the Seiko lineup on the higher end, higher end you know, price point. Uh, these are about 2,500 on the Marine Master. These are about 800 or so on the Sumo. Um, but um, both have, actually this has a ceramic bezel on the Marine Master. This one has an aluminum bezel insert. This one on the Sumo is running the newer 6R35, which is a 70 hour power reserve. This one has the 8L35, which has a 50 hour power reserve, beating away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. This one's 21,600. 21, um, both very good movements. This one is considered to be an undecorated Grand Seiko movement here in the MM300, but both very good movements. Now, if you look at the dials, the dial on the Marine Master looks a little bit smaller. The Sumo does look bigger. The bezel on, for whatever reason, the bezel on the Sumo looks bigger, wider than the Marine Master. Handset obviously is totally different. Loom plots look about the same size. Both Prospects models. You can see that towards the six o'clock. This one's a 200 meter on the Sumo. This one's a 300. Very nice winding action on both. I will say the 8L35 is just buttery smooth to wind. But uh, we could hear that right now. Listen up. Barely hear it wind. And then if you do the Sumo, which... For a 6R35, I guess you'd want to say a lower grade movement. Just a little louder, but it almost feels kind of the same as the 8L. So very nice. I think they did a great job with this movement. I, I really do. And I like that 70 hour power reserve. It seems like all the watch manufacturers are going towards that now. Um, now here's the thing on the wrist, where how this fits. There's the wingspan. So we're about 51 but it's a lot thinner. This thing's coming in at 13 millimeters, okay? Now the Marine Master has about the same wingspan, maybe a little bit shorter, but the thickness is much bigger. Now, if you look though, the way these Seikos are made, if you look at the bottom part of the case, they slope down. They just come right down right here. You got that angle, that real sharp angle, and then it comes out. So you're actually measuring this point here, right? So it's very wearable. Look at that. So your, your wrist makes contact right here. That's why these are so comfortable to wear. And that's why I want to compare these two because these are both very popular models. This is what I think people are going to be looking at. Um, by the way, they both have drilled lugs. But let's do, I do have my caliper right here. Let's get an exact measurement of the wingspan. So if I can get this, yeah, we're at 51.3. If we do the Marine Master, we are at 49.5. Uh, I'm, I'm calling it, I'd say 50. I'm probably not measuring it perfectly, but 50. So this is a little bit shorter. Let's try that again. And about, I'm um, coming up with 50.1. So they're about the same. And then on the thickness, 15.2 on the Marine Master. And this one, like we said, was around 13, 12.8. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it, it's a lot different. And, and the big difference is in its thickness. Okay. Um, and then side to side on this one, 44.8. So yeah, we're almost at that 45. And then here we are at 43.8. So about 44 almost. 
So very, very good there. Very nice sizing. The bezel on the MM300 just seems a lot more refined. Just beautiful clicks. In fact, I really think, and it lines up, I really think out of all Seikos, this is probably one of the best. I have not tried a Grand Seiko die bezel, but I think out of all the Seikos, this is about the best you can get right here. And it does have a ceramic bezel. Okay. And then this one, it's decent. It's decent. A little more mushy sounding. Not so much clicky like the other. But it does line up also. So. But, um, bracelets. Now... This MM300, in my opinion, has the best bracelet, uh, much better than this one. But if you don't like, everyone complains that these are thick because of the ratcheting system there, but I don't feel that it's thick at all. I, I think it's fine. It wears just fine. So this is a little bit thinner, but this is stamped steel. This is kind of kind of cheap, cheaply, you know, cheaper made. But yeah, it does lay flatter. If you can see that, it does lay a lot flatter. And then the diver's extension is built into this area here. If you look at this, this has that ratcheting system, which makes it a little bit better. But if you look, yeah, it does, it is a little bit thicker. But if you look at side profile, it's really not bad at all. People complain about it. I like this bracelet. I think this is a nice bracelet. I honestly don't even use this though very often because you open that up and then you can adjust that. I really don't use that, but I guess you could on the fly if you wanted to. But um, this seems on the wrist a little bit uh, top heavy, just because it is. It's a huge brick. It's pretty thick up on top. But I'll be honest, the way this Sumo wears, it's so much thinner. And it seems like it's a little bit longer from the side to side, but it just lays a lot flatter on the wrist. It really does. So, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's not going to be perfect, right? There's always, you know, pros and cons to each watch. I really just want to get these side by side because they're both, like I said, they're very popular. If you're looking at one or the other, I'm sure, you know, you're looking at both together, most likely, you know, to make your decision. So you want to spend 800 bucks on this one, or you want to spend 25 on this. Um, this is the classic, you know, like from the, harkens back to the older 6159s, back from the 60s. Um, which I really like. That's why I like this dial and handset. I mean, they're just amazing. I really love these. It's kind of the modern interpretation of that watch. I know they came out with a, a like, what is that? The SLA 025 or something like that, but um, it's thicker than this watch. So I really like the MM300. Um, date disc is in silver, which I think looks really good. Um, this one's in white with a border, white border on both. And I like that they put a border on these. I, I, I can't understand watches, watch dials without a border around the date. I just think it kind of cheapens it. I even had that on my Brightly and Super Ocean, which had no border, and that was just strange to me. I, I, I want a border or I want a bevel, something, just to kind of make it look more, you know, tied in together. You know what I mean? So, but this looks good. Now let's do a loom shot, and then we can close on both these beauties here. Let's get this one going. Yeah, I think the MM300 is going to kill it in this department, but for the price range, it's, it's kind of understandable. You can see my Uncle Seiko sticker in the back. That's got great loom also, but here we go. So yeah, look at that. So both really good loom, but you can just see the intensity of the MM300, how bright that is. It's just screaming. I mean, it's just loud, um, but I think they're both really good. You know, so even if you spent less money, around a thousand or under a thousand for the Sumo, I think you'd be very happy, and you're getting a good movement too. Um, MM300, in my opinion, is like my best Seiko. It's my overall favorite Seiko, except for my vintage pieces that I have. But um, they're both great watches. I like them both. So let's turn the lights back on. So there you have it, guys. I just want to give you a quick comparison of the two. I know I didn't get it all into the specs of you know the movements and everything else, but um, um, pretty good, fair comparison to keep this thing under 10 minutes. I didn't want to go too long, 
but um, very good. And oh, you know what? I didn't talk about, and I want to the brushing. Now I know for a fact this is Zarachu polishing right polishing right here. These are made at the I think the Grand Seiko um, uh, part of Seiko, and this does have Zarachu polishing. Okay, and just look at it. Look how that looks. Beautiful polishing, done perfectly well, right? If you look at that graininess at the top too, of the it's brushed up on top and polished on the side. Now, if you look at the the um, sumo, look at that brushing, pretty pretty close in comparison to the MM three hundred. Look at the I know there's smudges, but look at that polishing and the brushing. Look at that angle down the side, very similar. So are they doing Zeratsu polishing on these newer Sumos or is this just done at Seiko? That's how well their polishing is done at Seiko. I mean, I, I don't know, but very good at this price point. So the Sumo at, at, we're at that price point, you get a lot for the money. This is like probably one of the best bang per buck watches, sub a thousand bucks, I think. You get a lot for it. So anyway, there you have it, guys. Seiko Marine Master 300 and Seiko Sumo. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.